Let us pray. Hold hands together. It's good to be back. Shiloh, 2004. What a privilege. Father, speak to us. Change us. Permanently damage our ignorance. Help us to walk in revelation truth. We give you thanks in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon. It's good to be back home. I'd like for you to please give a warm welcome to my lovely wife, Ruth Monroe. Please stand up, sweetheart. And I'd like for you to also meet some friends that came with me all the way from the Caribbean, the United States, and India. My friends, please stand up. Pastor Arthur and his wife, Mark and Titus, please stand up. Give them a welcome to Nigeria. Turn your Bibles, please, to the book of Genesis, chapter 1, my favorite chapter in the Bible. I would like to speak to you on God's management principles. God's management principles or kingdom management principles. Every human was born to be in business. And there are 6.7 billion people on earth. And each one of them was designed by God to be in business. However, the cemetery is filled with businesses that never opened. I still sadly believe that the wealthiest spot on earth is not the diamond mines of South Africa or the gold mines of South America. It is not the oil fields of Iran, Iraq, or Kuwait. But I still believe that the wealthiest spot on planet earth is the cemetery. And the cemetery is wealthy because buried in the cemetery are dreams that never became reality, books that were never written, paintings that were never painted are in the graveyard, music that was never written or sung are in the cemetery. The graveyard is filled with great men who died as alcoholics and drug addicts. It is filled with great women who died as prostitutes and alcoholics. The cemetery is filled with companies that never opened, products that were never sold, inventions that were never invented. What a tragedy. What do we call this wealth in the cemetery? I call it potential. The graveyard is filled with potential because the word potential means untapped power, unused energy, dormant ability. The word potential means hidden strength. It means unused success. The cemetery is filled with potential because people die never manifesting the great ability and gifts and talents that God hid within each of us. I came back to Nigeria because of one passion. And that passion is that sitting next to you right now is someone who is a candidate to add to the wealth of the cemetery. It is my hope that at the end of Shiloh 2004, you would have made a decision to die empty. You will not take 
that great gift, that idea, that dream that God gave you birth with and for to the cemetery. And if you agree to die empty, let me hear you shout amen. amen. Tell your neighbor, don't die until you are empty. I am so excited about the theme of this year's conference and that is showers of blessing. When we think of the word blessing, we normally think of receiving something. I thought that was the meaning also, but as I studied and grew in the faith, I was shocked that many words that we read and we have our ideas about them are not always what we thought they were. The word blessing or to bless, please write it down, it's from a Hebrew word. It is spelled B-A-R-A-K. Barach. It is also in the New Testament a word called E-U-O-L-O-G-U-E. -E. It's where we get our word eulogy from. The word bless means to praise, but it also means to release. Please write that down. The word bless means to release ability. To release ability. To bless means to give permission for ability to be released. This is important because God has called us together at the end of 2004 to speak over us showers of blessing. God in this great conference is demanding from you the ability that he hid inside of you. When God says, bless you, he is telling you, release your hidden ability. God's purpose for creation was to serve the purposes of man. And God's purpose for creating you and me was to have dominion over creation. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 is very clear. And God said, let us make a species called man. And let us make them in our own image and in our likeness. Why? Why did God create these beautiful creatures called man? He tells us in the next statement. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle of the field, and over all the earth, and over everything that creeps upon the ground. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them and God blessed them. Uh oh, there's that word. Verse 28 and God what? Bless them. And God did what? Bless them. So God created a species called man. He made them in two models, male and female model. My wife is a man and I am a man. But she is the female model and I am the male model. 
All companies make different models. When you buy a car from Toyota, you got a truck model and a sedan model and you got a station wagon model. But it's the same company and all of these are automobiles. They are the same product, but they come in different models based on their use. I am a man in a male body. My wife is a man in a female body. So we are both man. The word man is the Hebrew word ish, I-S-H. And it's referring to the whole species. All of us are spirit beings called man. But the male and the female are the different models. And God blessed them. And God did what? Now, God created this spirit species called man to have dominion over the creation. And he listed birds, fish, livestock, animals, plants in the earth, and things that creep on the ground. He gave us dominion. The word dominion means to govern, to rule, to control, to manage and to lead. Please write that down. The word dominion means what? To govern, to rule, to control, to master, to manage, and to lead. The word dominion means rulership, kingship, authority, to govern, to rule, to control, to manage, and to lead. When God created you, he did not have slavery on his mind. He had rulership. When God created you, he did not have servitude on his mind. He had authority and dominion and management and leadership. You were created by God to demonstrate rulership, dominion, authority, mastery, management, but not over people. Notice the list includes fish and birds and cattle and trees and things that crawl on all fours. But there's one thing missing on the list and it's another human. Tell your neighbor, you are not created to dominate me. So mind your own business. <laughs> Every human being in this auditorium was created by God to have rulership, dominion, authority, management, and mastery over something in the earth. That means trapped inside of you is the spirit of dominion. Trapped inside of you is the gift of rulership and mastery, but not over people. Very important. Now, God knew that inside of Adam was a ruler, a master, a governor, a manager, an authority. He knew it was there because he put it there. And God knows it's inside of you. But in verse 28, this is very important, God speaks. It says, and God blessed them. Whenever God blesses someone, he must speak afterwards. There must be an announcement. A blessing must be followed by an announcement. Why? Because a blessing is permission to release ability that's trapped on the inside. So God could not just say, bless you, Adam and Eve, and then walk off. Because to bless means to permit ability to be released. So God had to say, and God blessed them and said. You cannot bless without speaking afterwards. And you must speak to the ability on the inside. This is the year that God is setting you up 
to release your potential. And God is going to speak to every one of you before this week is over. And he will not only say, bless you, but he's going to make a statement afterwards. Because to bless means to identify and to release ability. God saw. <laughs> God saw billions of people inside of Adam. God saw billions of sperms inside of Adam's loins. So Adam was full of the human race. Uh, God is amazing. There are over six billion people on earth, but God only created one from the soil. He never went back. That means everybody was in that one body. God finished everybody, put them inside one body, and took the one body, put it in the garden, and call it Adam. The word Adam means dark earth. I knew he was an African. The word Adam is not a name. It's a Hebrew description. God looked at the soil that he used and he called it dark earth. And inside the dark earth was a species called man. God created man and put all of man in one body. Then God went inside the body and took out another body and called it wombed man, the man with the womb. Now God has two. He has a male body and a female body. And in verse 28, God is starting business. God speaks to them and said, Adam, be fruitful. And the Lord blessed them and said, what? Be fruitful. The Lord blessed them and said, what? Be fruitful. The Lord blessed them and said what? The Lord did what? Bless them. In other words, he said to them, I now permit you to release what's on the inside. I now identify what you are carrying. And I give you my permission to release What's on the inside? This is why it's important for us to bless one another. Tonight we will talk about how that works. But let me show you chapter 2 of Genesis. Please turn there. Genesis chapter 2 verse 4. And when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, there was no shrub on the field of the earth. For no shrub had yet appeared on the earth, and no plant of the field had yet sprung up, because the Lord God had not allowed rain on the earth, and there was no man to work the ground. Streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. Then the Lord formed the man's body from the dust of the ground and breathe man into the body the breath of life and this creature became a living being look at me a second this is a very important verse first of all I want you to notice that the earth was present but there was no life on the earth it says because God did not allow rain. Why did not God allow rain? Because he didn't want anything to grow. Why didn't God want anything to grow on the earth? It tells us in this verse. 
verse 5 he did not send rain on the earth and didn't allow anything to grow because there was no man to work the ground very important God did not allow anything to grow on the earth because there was no man to work the ground. The word work here means to manage, to create order, to cultivate, to produce productivity. God says, I will not allow anything to grow on this earth until I have a manager. One of the most important lessons I learned is that God created you and me because he needed a manager. You were created to be a manager. Management is God's motivation for your creation. I repeat, management is God's motivation for your creation. God looked at the earth and said, I will allow nothing to grow until I have a manager. And so the reason for your creation was God needed a manager. Say amen. amen. You see, I thought God worshiped, God made me rather just to worship him, to sing and to dance and to clap. But that it does not exist in Genesis chapter 1 and 2. God's motivation was not that he needed someone to sing. He didn't need somebody to go to worship meetings. He needed someone to manage the material resources on earth. In other words, God's purpose for creating man was God needed a business manager. Say amen. amen. If you don't understand this, you won't understand God. Now, here's a lesson you must write down. God will not allow growth where there is no management. When you fail to manage, God will make sure things die. And if you do not manage what you have, you will lose what you have. Mismanagement will always produce poverty. Good management will always attract prosperity. Bad management will always produce lack. Good management and effective management will always produce more. God will keep from you what you are unable to manage. Here's a lesson to remember about business. If you want more from God, manage the little you have effectively. Because God is always watching management. He will not allow growth where there is no management. Some of you are asking God to give you more business. But God is watching how you manage the business you have already. If you cannot give an account of the resources that you have already, God will keep from you the resources you are asking for. When I understood this principle, it changed my prayer life. God will not give you what you are praying for. God will give you what you can manage. God will not give you what you are praying for. God will give you what you can manage. Luke chapter 16. Jesus was holding a business seminar. And here's his lesson in that seminar. He said, if you cannot be trusted with little first, who will trust you with more? 
if you cannot be trusted with another man's resources who will give you resources of your own Jesus said if you mismanage little you will mismanage much therefore he said if you manage little well I will give you more the principle is don't pray for more manage the little well and more will come God refused to allow progress and growth on the earth why because there was no man to manage God hates bush <laughs> God hates for things to grow wild I sat with Bishop Ayedapu last night at dinner and he was sharing about this property he said six years ago this property was bush do you think God was pleased no there were no buildings no school no university no church no teaching no training no development no progress no people it was bush and God was excited when a little boy was born named David Oyedipu because he knew that little boy would turn the bush into a city let's give God thanks to Canaan land there is bush in the city you came from now God wants you to go back to your city and don't just see bush but see a business on that bush see a city in that bush and you go back and do what God did with this bush turn it into productivity God's purpose for creating you was management so the next verse says verse 7 so the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground breathe into him the breath of life and man became a living being so what is management and why did God create man let me give you a definition of management management is the effective use an efficient application of resources management is the effective coordination of resources for the successful fulfillment of goals management is the intentional acceptance of responsibility for the use of resources with accountability to oneself and to another's authority management is the successful fulfillment of stewardship now because of a lack of time I am sorry I can't repeat those because I want to get to something else so please buy this tape and get the definitions let me repeat the last one though management is the successful fulfillment of stewardship Adam was given the planet and God says dominate it master it manage it for me all of us have received that same mandate we exist on earth to effectively and efficiently develop and use the resources with accountability to God Nigeria is the wealthiest country in Africa because of the oil deposits Nigeria based on the UN report is number six in the oil producing nations of the world Nigeria has more wealth than any African country in the world and yet I look at Nigeria and you look at your great country and you see the streets and the communities and the villages and the homes and you look and you travel and you come back 
and you say, why can't we develop our infrastructure and improve our environment and build better houses? Why? Remember, God gave us resources to effectively manage them. Canaan land is proof that Nigeria can develop a world-class, first-class facility and city right in the heart of the bush. This is evidence of good management. Nigeria does not lack money, does not lack resources. Nigeria is lacking effective management. And whatever you mismanage, you lose. I repeat, whatever you mismanage, you will lose. When you mismanage, other people will benefit from your wealth. That's why as a businessman and a businesswoman, my message to you is very simple. You must maximize and effectively learn how to manage what you have already. Study how to properly use and maximize your resources before you ask for more. Start with what you have and make it better. And let me close with God's program for management. God told Adam, have dominion, mastery over the earth. God will never give you an instruction without giving you instruction on how to do it. God told Adam to have dominion, mastery, rulership over earth's resources. Now God is going to tell man how to do it. Look at verse 27. So God created man in his own image, male and female. Verse 28. And God blessed them. What does blessing mean? To release what's on the inside. He said, I'm going to show you how to release your dominion. First of all, he says, be fruitful. Write that down. Number one, be fruitful. Number two, multiply. Multiply. Number three, replenish. Replenish. Number four, subdue. Subdue. And number five, have dominion. Verse 28 is the secret to good business. I was born in a family of 11 children. One mother, one father in a wooden house on an island seven miles wide. That house was built on four stones to keep the roaches and rats out. They got in. I slept on the floor of that house as a boy on a mat and a dirty sheet. And I grew up in the poorest part of our little island in a village called Bainstown in the Caribbean. We were so poor, but we didn't know we were poor because everybody else was poor. And I used to wear one uniform to school every day. Had to get it washed every day. I took my lunch and my books to school in a shopping bag with grease. I ate bread and peanut butter for lunch. My brother and I used to wear the same underwear. We traded Monday for you, Tuesday for me. Today, I own my own house. I own my own Roulette jet. I live by the beach. I am worth mm, money. <laughs> and I impact 
millions of people every day all over the world. My books are in 78 countries and I still live on the same island where I slept on the floor. How do you go from the floor to being a millionaire? The secret is understanding these four things I just gave you. Business begins with God's program. First of all, God says, if you want to become successful in business, if you want to dominate your area of gifting, if you want to have rulership and mastery over the earth, number one, be fruitful. Everybody say it. Say it loud. I can't hear you. Shake the roof. One more time. The word fruitful here, write it down, does not mean to have children. <laughs> the word fruitful here means to be productive. Having children is being productive. But the, the blessing was not limited to children. It means to be what? Productive. God's first command to you as man is be productive. That means produce something. Now, everybody say fruitful. The word fruitful is important. God uses the word fruitful also because it assumes that there is seed. You cannot have fruit unless a seed pre-exists it. Fruit comes from seed. God never said be seedful. <laughs> God will never tell a human to be seedful. Why? Because he has already assumed that you have seed. His command is to be fruitful. Produce what I know is on the inside. You cannot demand a fruit unless a seed exists. When God told Adam and Eve and you to be fruitful, he was saying, there is seed already on the inside of every human being. Sitting next to you is a seed waiting to be germinated. Sitting next to you is a seed of greatness that is waiting for the right environment to bring forth a tree laden with fruit. God's first command, be fruitful, means that you have a gift hidden on the inside and that gift is your business. The difference between a job and a business is that a job is what they pay you to do. But a business is what you pay them to become. You'll get that after I'm gone. A businessman and a businesswoman, a genuine business person, doesn't seek a job. They seek to manifest an idea. That's why they are called entrepreneurs. An entrepreneur is a person who have discovered an idea that wouldn't leave them. It's a dream that wouldn't go away. It's a seed that is trapped. And when they decide to develop that idea and produce from that idea, their business has begun. Most of us, we imitate people in business. That's why our business fails. When you imitate people in business, it means that you have not discovered your own seed. And you are only designed and built to produce your own seed. 
So when you copy other people's business because you think they are making a lot of money, you will fail. Because your true business is discovering your own gifting and developing the fruit from that gift. And when you discover that seed and develop that seed, you're beginning to discover your true business. That's why a true entrepreneur can never be fired. Because you cannot fire a person from being themselves. <laughs> I, I will succeed no matter where I go. Because my wealth is not in my environment. My wealth is in my seed. The poorest country in the world is a little island called Haiti in the Caribbean, according to United Nations statistics. When I went to Haiti, I was shocked to see trees growing there. Why? Because the world says that is the poorest country in the world. The problem is the seeds don't know that. So they still grow. So it is with you and I. It doesn't matter what people say about the economy of Nigeria because the future of Nigeria and your success is not in Nigeria. It's within you. You change Nigeria by producing your fruit. The second principle of God is multiply. Everybody say multiply. When you produce a fruit, the next stage of business is to multiply that fruit. If you produce an idea, the most important thing is to reproduce it. The word multiply means to reproduce. Every successful business in the world has followed God's program. Bill Gates has followed God's program. Colonel Sanders has followed God's program. AT&T has followed God's program. All the major companies in the world have followed God's program. First, they produce a fruit. Bill Gates had an idea and he left college to develop his idea because his professors didn't believe in his fruit and he built his fruit outside of college. The man who created the desktop computer, Apple computer, his name is Stephen Jobs, he built his idea in the garage of his house. He left college and locked up in a garage and built his fruit. No one believed in his fruit except him. And he built the first computer in a garage. Bill Gates built his software outside of college. He built his fruit. But then they both had a problem. How do you multiply it? And that's when they went to manufacturers who was able to multiply it. You must develop a fruit that is able to be multiplied. Maybe today you're supposed to develop a new kind of fufu. In the Bahamas, there is no fufu in our food stores. In America, there's no fufu in the food store. Why? There are millions of Nigerians in America and no fufu in the food store. Because no one has seen fufu as a fruit. And even though you can produce fufu, the second stage is, can you multiply it? Can you keep reproducing millions of them and put them in a package and ship them? You have to find a way to multiply your fruit. When I speak, it's one sermon, one teaching. But they record my teaching. And then my department takes my one teaching and multiply it a hundred thousand times and ships it around the world. They multiply it. And when they multiply it, you lead to number three. He says, replenish. Everybody say replenish. The word replenish means to distribute. Distribution. Business will only succeed if you can distribute your product. A lot of you got good ideas, but you cannot reproduce it. And if you could reproduce it, you are stuck with it 
because there's no distribution system. I challenge you, young woman, young man, listen to the words of God. He says, first, produce a fruit. Then, multiply it. Reproduce it. Then, distribute it. You will never succeed in business if you cannot distribute your product. You must find a way to distribute. All businesses fail because of a lack of distribution. The internet has allowed every human in this building to become a global distributor. Because you can sell your product now on the internet without having the complications of having to work through middlemen. You can now sell quality fufu around the world. Create your own website, Fufu International. Fufu with raisins, fufu with coconut, fufu with curry, fufu with this and fufu with that. We need creative people. <laughs> Why can't we dream? Distribution is the key to success in business. Kentucky Fried Chicken, McDonald's Hamburgers, Burger King Hamburgers, even Disney World, they have copied God's program. They produce a product, Big Mac. Then they reproduce it the same every time. Then they build franchises, distribution system. What is your distribution system? Jesus came, one product. He reproduced himself in 12 products. Then he told them to go into all the world and distribute the product. Jesus Christ created the first global product. Globalization was not created by us. It was created by Jesus. Go into all the world, he says, and take my product the gospel to every creature you must think the same way finally number four he says subdue the word subdue means to control the market every successful business will only succeed if it will control its part of the market what makes Dr. Bishop David Ayedapu successful? He has produced his seed, which is called faith teaching. He has reproduced it in books and tapes and videos and CDs. Then he has distributed it by television and bookstores and mailings. And now he subdues the market. He is the man to come to when you want to learn about faith in Nigeria. My question is, what is your market as a businessman, a businesswoman? Don't just go into business to make a living. Go into business to dominate the market of your gift. Become the best in your gifting. Become the best in your area of gifting. Let them seek you when they want that gift. Let you be the one they think of when they want what you have. You become the expert. You become the sought after. You become the master of that area. Subdue. And God says, if you are fruitful, produce your gift. And if you multiply, reproduce your gift. And if you distribute, replenish your gift. And if you dominate your market, subdue it, then he says, you will have dominion. Therefore, you were not created to have dominion 
over people. You were created to dominate an area of gifting. My question is, what do you master? You were born to master something. There's something you were born to do that no one else can do like you. This week, seek God to reveal that gift that's in you. You were not born to do everything. You were only born to do one thing. Find that gift and it's not outside of you. Your business is trapped in you. Let me close with a scripture from the book of John chapter 17. Jesus was 12 years old. His mother and father came to him and he was in a temple where they left him and he was teaching the older men. They were asking him questions and he began to share with them as a 12 year old boy his knowledge of the word of God he began to teach them about the mysteries of God when his parents came and they found him they said what are you doing here and they said we were looking for you everywhere what are you doing here we were looking for you everywhere. What are you doing here? We were looking for you everywhere. You will never succeed in business when you stop going everywhere. He was in the temple teaching the word of God. And they asked him, what are you doing here? We we're looking for you everywhere. Stop being a jack of all the trades. Find something to master. Jesus turned to his mother and said, you were looking for me? 12 years old. He said, he said, mama, did you not know <laughs> Didn't you know, as if they were supposed to know, I was about my father's business. If you will succeed in business, you will have to hide from a lot of people and focus on one thing. Did you not know I must be about my father's business? What is his father's business? John chapter 17. He's at the end of his work and he's about to go to the cross. His last prayer was like this. Father, The hour has come to glorify your son. Because I have brought you glory. How many of you here today would like to bring God glory on earth? Let me see your hands. If you'd like to say it, say, Lord, let me bring you glory on earth. Now, are you sure you want to do that? Let's read how you bring God glory on earth. He said, Father, I have brought you glory on earth, not by singing, not by speaking in tongues, not by dancing, not by clapping, not by attending church meetings, not by prayer meetings, not even by praying. He said, but I have brought you glory 
on earth. How? By completing the work you gave me to do. What is your business? My business is to be a ransom and to teach the kingdom to the world and to die to redeem them. That's my business, he said. Please look at me quick. Jesus, Jesus did not do saving. Jesus did not do salvation. He is Savior. An apple seed and a mango seed does not do mango trees. They are mango trees. And mango seed is a mango tree. Jesus doesn't do saving. He is Savior. His business was his seed. And when he completed the work, he said, now I've bought you glory. My word to you is, you are a walking seed. There is a vision, a dream, an idea that God hid in you, in your spirit man. And that is where your prosperity is. That is why the Bible never says a man's Education will make room for him in the world. But a man's what? Gift. The Bible says, he that turneth his gift, it shall prosper him. The word prosper means, turn it rather, means to refine, to develop, to maximize. He who maximizes gift, it shall prosper him. Your business is not something you do. Your business is something you are. Do it before you die and let the Lord bless you and bless the world. Thank you very much. Stand up on your feet. Hallelujah. Everybody stand up. Lift your hand in the air. Repeat after me. I am full of seed. I am carrying a divine seed. I was born with seed. I possess seed. Placed in me by God. I have in me a forest. In the form of a seed. And I will produce my fruit. And I will multiply my fruit. And I will distribute my fruit. And I will subdue my market. And I will dominate my area of gifting. I am a success looking for somewhere to manifest itself. Lift those hands up high and worship him for a second. Thank you, Father. Heavenly Father. I speak to the seed on the inside of every human here. Seed, come forth. Seed, by the words I spoke today, germinate. Seed, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, bring forth fruit. Seed, fill the earth with your greatness. Seed, prosper the container. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Lord, I pronounce a blessing. Oh, oh. I bless you in the name of Jesus. That your company will come forth. That your business will arise. I release you to maximize your potential. I bless you to manifest your dream. I bless you to fill the earth with your gift. I bless you to become all you were born to be in the name of Jesus and it shall happen to you now in Jesus name shout hallelujah somebody hallelujah put your hands on your neighbor and tell them touch your neighbor tell them die empty in the name of Jesus Oh, come on, pray for them. Lay hands. Say, die empty. In the name of Jesus. Die empty. In the name of Jesus. Lay hands on them again. Say, die empty. In the name of Jesus. Bring forth your forest. In the name of Jesus. Die empty. Hallelujah. Praise him right now. Praise him. Come on, praise his name. God bless you.